As much as I am a committed player of CRPGs, I realize that a game is fairly finite and can only contain and address so much, and a fantasy setting, such as Forgotten Realms, is rich in both already discovered lore as well as undiscovered, and teams with stories that are yet to be told, which sometimes, in fact, do take the form of a game such as Baldur's Gate 3, or in other settings, such as the setting of the Divinity series. But in contrast to something such as Divinity, which I have enjoyed a fair bit, if I'm perfectly honest, the Forgotten Realms has a long and storied history of being transcribed onto the written page, and only later then turned into code. To be sure, I view both projects as equally noble and worthy of pursuit, but for those gamers who have only recently discovered their Forgotten Realms through the format of the CRPG, there are many things that might still warrant your attention that would grant you greater insight and understanding into this world that began in 1987, and some of the best material is not in the handbooks or monster manuals, but in the characters and stories that have had life breathed into them in the form of novels, which recount their tales and exploits in vivid detail, and tell us as much, if not more, about the world we find so fascinating as a video game would. And it's in this spirit that I thought to myself, Perhaps I should make a video recommending the novels I think are best illustrative of the world that also tie into Baldur's Gate 3, either directly or indirectly, and that this could be particularly enriching to individuals who have yet to explore the details of the Forgotten Realms. Now obviously, this is not intended to be a comprehensive list, nor are the books cited here what I would call masterpieces. Rather, they serve the purpose of cultural education on the Forgotten Realms fantasy setting, and it will obviously remain spoiler-free in terms of the very specific details of the books. But I thought to myself, since Dark Elves play such an important role in Baldur's Gate 3, Thus far, books that explore drow civilization could be vital to understanding just what a Dark Elf is in terms of culture and heritage. Now, I do realize that the character Drith Stoorden is not always favorably looked upon, but the value of the Forgotten Realms books that include him is far less to be found in the fact that they include him, but rather in how they explain and explore drow society and culture. With that said, the very first series I would recommend reading is the so-called Dark Elf Trilogy. True to its namesake, the trilogy explores the travails and tribulations of a young Dritz de Urden as he comes of age in the drow city of Menzo Baranzan. This series probably gives the deepest and most useful insight into drow culture and civilization, and you will learn much about just how bad it is to be a drow, as when we speak of drow society, we're basically speaking of drow religion, as devotion to Loth takes precedence over all else in the world of the Dark Elves. And more interestingly, it depicts in detail both the difficulty of escaping its horrors and the price one pays for attempting to do so. Needless to say, it hits very hard in conveying that feeling of, wow, drow society is very, very messed up. Beyond this, the Dark Elf trilogy offers striking insights and details into the Underdark environment itself, and its many denizens, horrors, and surprises, as much as it offers commentary on drow society, as the two are very much inextricably bound to each other. Another Dark Elf series that is useful for exploring drow religion and society is The War of the Spider Queen, which covers the, at the time, successful ascension of Lulth from an intermediate goddess to a greater goddess, something that was later retconned by Wizards of the Coast. Nonetheless, the series offers great insights into the inner workings of the religion of Lulth the Spider Queen, and the constant vying and jockeying for power that so characterizes it by nature, since you are able to witness the chaotic nature of drow religion, as seeming favorites rise and fall, and the least predictable outcomes end up coming true. More importantly, you also gain insight into Lal's daughter and competitor, the goddess Illustre, and how her own priesthood works. All in all, it offers something you would otherwise rarely gain insight on. Although there are other books and series which delve into the drow, I do think these two probably do the most justice to giving a comprehensive overview of what it means to be drow, how drow society and religion work, and how absolutely wicked, depraved, and evil Lalth, and by extension her worshippers are. So next time you entertain playing the drow, you'll be better prepared for your role-playing experience, whether as a Seldarine drow or a Lalth sword. A rarely talked about series that was never particularly popular, but nonetheless offers special insight, in this case into ancient Netheril, is the rather uncreatively named Netheril Trilogy, which details the adventures and experiences of a variety of personalities, both those who live in the shadow of the great Netherese Empire 
such as the barbarian Sunbright Steelshanks, who runs afoul of Netherese wizards, and the great Netherese Arcanists themselves, including none other than Karsus, the most infamous of all Netherese wizards. It begins just prior to the birth of Karsus, at the beginning of the Shadowed Age, around 700 before Dale Reckoning, or approximately 2,200 years ago. The series displays the decadence and hubris of ancient Netheril, and might give you some insight into the nature of a society that allowed for the creation of your tadpole, as we know that the tadpole in your head is held in stasis by powerful Netherese magic. Now you know how much I like talking about the gods, and a little secret I will reveal here is that back in my pen and paper days, the cleric was my go-to class. But regardless of my personal inclinations, the gods are a powerful and active force in Faerun, and they feature prominently everywhere, including and especially in Baldur's Gate 3. Well, no such series would be complete without the Avatar trilogy, or the books documenting and covering the Time of Troubles and the interactions of the gods in Faerun at the time. You get a great introduction into deific politics for the first time, to know some of the major players in the Pantheon, including, but not limited to, the Dead Three. And these are books that document the ascension of both the new Mistra and Siric, God of Lies. In fact, it takes place at a time just prior to the Dead Three dying and acquiring that title. This series is followed up by individual novels, which cover the ascension of Kelimvor and Mistra's reign as a goddess post-Time of Troubles, as well as the descent into madness of the god Siric. And these books are The Prince of Lies and The Crucible, The Trial of Siric the Mad, respectively. You will learn just how human-like Faroon's gods can be, and how, and here I'm speculating, I have to admit, divine politicking might figure into Baldur's Gate 3 in our interactions when it comes to the gods in the game. And finally, we have the Haunted Lands trilogy, and this is more speculative on my part, because I don't know just how involved the Red Wizards will be, but I do think they'll be involved in some capacity in Baldur's Gate 3. This series covers the invasion of Thay by Saz Tom and his ascension to absolute power in that majocracy, but also offers information and insight into the inner workings of the Red Wizards, as well as other things such as magic and necromancy. Not a magisterial work by any means, but nonetheless something that could be of interest to people with the time and inclination to read it. As when the Red Wizards show up in Baldur's Gate 3, I think it's likely they will, those who have read this series will be much better prepared and will know what they're in for. Now there is a long, long list of books and book series that I could continue talking about, but rather than overwhelm you, I thought it most pertinent to mention books that touch upon things, events, and people that are either obviously going to be in Baldur's Gate 3, confirmed to be, or likely to be, based on evidence from the game. And I think based on this, that if you were to read these books, you would gain a much greater insight into the Forgotten Realms, and would be better able to appreciate the game upon full release come summer, in terms of its lore and the story. And as always, thank you for tuning in. Please leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe, as it really helps out the channel. And I'll check you out next time. Take care.